so if I'm fired, I can say whatever I want. What's up, my miners of intelligence and consciousness? I'm Rick Brooks, and this is Rick's Mind. We got a fireside chat today. We got, we've, we're going to have John rambling on about nonsense and trying to bring us down. But you know what? I've brought in a new force to vanquish the bummer cast, and that's Sammy. Sammy, what's going on? Um, what is going on? Just kind of vibing with you guys, following what you guys are going to be doing. Living the dream? That's right. Well, she is uh, actually a new team member, and she is going to be running the social media and just fucking crushing it. And I'm, I'm super happy to have you here. And uh, I, you know, like, Thank you. You, you've already, like, changed this. You've changed the podcast for the better. So I'm super, super blessed to have you. And as always, we got motherfucking DJ demarco in the house what's DJ up brother? bummer cast here i am um, no I'm good. Uh, it's not <laughs> <laughs> i you know it's i not, i bring the show down that's what i do no Gotta you bring the it. show up it's sometimes you do bring us down a little bit but i like that man i like it i like it because it's called balance you know <laughs> it's called balance i'm too i'm too much of a positive pet but i do want to talk to you have you guys seen the new dune movie not yet, no. I have not. Are you kidding me? No. <laughs> it's a fucking masterpiece. I've heard it. I mean, it looks good. I just haven't seen okay, it. Okay, to be frank, you guys are going to like hate that I say this. I know literally nothing about Dune. Uh, it's uh, actually, a kind of classic, big, big time, like, uh, sci-fi movie, kind of like in the, in the style of like Blade Runner, where it's like a really cerebral kind of super duper extra like high sci-fi kind of thing uh, okay. it's very good okay to be to be fair i didn't actually know anything about it before the movie came out and then um i kind of bought the book and uh i am i think 90 percent through it and then i just watched the the, the movie and it's amazing it's a really good adaptation adapt, adaptation uh i would say <laughs> of the book like i really adaptation. really really adaptation there's that's a new word um I, I thought it was i thought it was amazing um and there's like there's like there's a lot of decent films out that i kind of want to go see but you guys seen the new james bond anything like that not yet no nope letting you down sorry bummer i'm a shut-in this man. is the f- i'm a bummer this is the first this is the first you're the you're the big <laughs> cinephile of the show i haven't seen the new james bond either to be fair but i was wow. hoping i've, wow. I've heard good okay. things <laughs> hypocrisy yeah really i'm hearing some hypocrisy <laughs> is what i'm hearing <laughs> well i was i was hoping that we would i was hoping that one of you had, had seen it like um i i I know that this is what Daniel Craig's last one, so I definitely want to get into yes. the movie theaters to watch it. Are you are you a Bond fan? We've never talked about this, John. Oh fuck yeah, yeah, that's one of my absolute favorite uh, film franchises. I have oh, man, I think I, I don't remember. I think I saw the first Bond movie I saw was Thunderball. I think uh, when I was probably like nine or ten, um, and then I've been like. A huge fan of them since like i've seen outside of the newest one um everyone that i've been alive for that has come out in the theaters i've seen in the theaters um i was i i tend to like more of the newer i think dan personally i think daniel craig is the best bond and the best bond film is casino royale um and i'm a, also a big fan of the pierce brosnan ones too I would I would agree with you. I think that Daniel Craig is definitely the best James Bond. There, there's always going to be a soft spot in our hearts for Pierce Brosnan because that's what we grew up with. But when I don't even remember, I can't I can't think of the first Bond that Daniel Craig was in. But they were doing parkour in it, and I was like, bro, this just took it to another. That was level. Casino Royale. That was Casino Royale. Thank you. That was. I mean, that was. Yeah. It's a masterpiece, and then the 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 Spectre as a, that was a last one, right? I thought that one was garbage. Mm-hmm. It was terrible. They went kind back of, to like, kinda, yeah. I didn't like it at all. I hated that one. I was very I didn't like it either. I thought, 
I so if you want to go cinephile take on it, I like all the all the James Bond movies. Like for what they are, they are what they are. They're great. They're fun. They're entertaining. Um, I thought Casino Royale set like a giant new standard for the franchise in terms of like every aspect: the production quality, the artistic quality, the writing, the acting, everything. Mm. Um, and I was I I loved Casino Royale because it was different than all the other James Bond movies. There wasn't it wasn't just like you know which hot girl is James going to try to have sex with next, and then how many people is he going to kill? It was like depth and there was huge character development with Bond um, and I had really 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 high hopes for it and the next film uh, I think it was Quantum of Solace had quite a bit of mm-hmm. that still but it kind of went back to that uh, like a nice happy medium of like what the new James Bond is versus what the old one was you know and balance balancing of the two to where I think like personally I think the the um, Daniel Craig Bond films peaked at Skyfall, which I thought was fantastic. I I would definitely agree with you. So I think the first one that we were talking about was No Time to Die. Then it went Casino Royale. Then Spectre, which I'm pretty sure mm-hmm. sucked. And then Skyfall, which I would agree yeah. with you was in that's what that, that's with Javier uh, Javier. Bardem. Javier, is it Bodem? Yeah, that's Thank a you. very good movie. Uh, yeah, it, he that was that was incredible. I I like that. And then you have um, Q Q passing passing on in, in that film. Spoiler mm-hmm. alert! But if you haven't seen that by now, go fuck yourself. I, um, I'm also <laughs> I'm also a very big fan of the '90s Bond films, like both because of you know childhood nostalgia, but then also because. Uh, they're also just fun, honestly. They kind of really emphasize that kind of like cheese factor that the like Roger Moore Bond films had, uh, where they weren't they they had serious moments, but they weren't like self serious. Like if you go back and watch Goldeneye, it's such a fucking cheese fest, but it's great. Uh, or like oh yeah. Um, Tomorrow Never Dies is fantastic. I oh. love Tomorrow Never Dies. Oh, oh. Um, dude, now we're versus talking. like, yeah, versus like Timothy Dalton Bond films where it was just like way too highbrow, taken way too seriously. Uh, you know, they're still good films, but good God, you could cut like forty-five minutes from each one. Did you, did you ever play James Bond on a, a Nintendo sixty-four? Oh, Goldeneye. It did uh, like the is wasn't there was that the the name of the game? I thought it was just James Bond on like N sixty four back in the day. Yeah, was Golden it Knight 007, yeah. Yeah. That Dude, was like I'm, one of my favorite games. My cousin had an N sixty four. I remember playing that game, being like, Man, this isn't that bad. Like this is <laughs> this is pretty I could maybe get into this. I was terrible though. Good god, I was terrible. But that's like one of the those childhood memories that seems to stick with me is like playing that with my cousin. Um, Did you ever play that same man? No, never. No, I am not gonna lie. I kind of feel like a baby after hearing you guys talk. (laughs) (laughs) But but no, I have not. It's all good. Have you seen uh, any of the James Bond movies? Um, in passing, it's never been anything I've really sought out. To be fair, like I don't have anything against it. Mm -hmm. Um, I just have. A very short attention span so <laughs> to get me to sit down and actually watch a movie sure. is a beat in itself yeah that's true um but it's one of those things that like it was my parents for some reason still have cable tv <laughs> um that's like always on that if my parents see it like when i'm at their house they'll always like put on if it's any like james bond anything for the most part mm-hmm. but it's like more like background stuff for them like they don't get super into it yeah so. That's legit. No, that's that's. I understand that. I understand that. Um, I, I, I'm telling you, we gotta go back to it. Watch Dune. Uh, you can watch it on HBO Max. Uh, in the theaters. I'm I'm this movie's big biggest advocate. I'm I'm a huge fan. I'm 89 percent sure sure that Star Wars stole most of its ideas uh, from Dune. Now. Um, so I'm pretty sure that that's. So are you to Dune how John is to Midsummer? No, Midsummer. Mid Midsummer is. I I've seen that film, and 
John, I, I'm talking about John's relationship. You say what you're going to say about this not movie. Not necessarily I, your. <laughs> I I enjoyed the shit out of Midsummer. I enjoyed yes. it. I gotta say that yes. okay, that we like I liked that. it. We like that. I I liked I liked it. I thought that I think the, I think the idea is is funny. Um, and I also feel like there's a few moments in that 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 film where some of the main characters did exactly like the, the shit that I would do. Like when when they murdered a oh, spoiler alert, but like when that that they were jumping off the cliff and that one guy like <laughs> murdered this dude with an axe. And this guy's like, shut the fuck up. Yeah. Like, we just need to play, yeah, like, yeah. act like we're cool. I would have done the exact same thing. I'd be like, yeah, I'm not going to freak out over this. Because right. like, yeah. if you do, like, at that point, I'm pretty sure that most of these people figured out that they were going to die. But, um, yeah, I, I am a, oh, yeah. uh, I'm definitely a, f- a fan of Midsummer. Uh, Doom's definitely better, uh, 100%. Without doubt. <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty obsessed. Oh, I'm pretty hey, obsessed no, he's with this film. to like a movie. You haven't seen it. Don't I just, knock when, when this. you were talking about like your your obsession your obsession for Dune, like in the what two years that I've known John ish, mm-hmm. like I'm we're either over there watching Hereditary, Midsummer, or As Above, So Below. So she's not wrong. She's not wrong. I don't know about this. <laughs> what is this? As Above. Oh boy. Oh boy. <laughs> All right. Here oh, we go. Wow. Here we yep. go. Okay. Here it is. So. <laughs> It is. Uh, Where's the IMDb link? I think, yeah, it'll be in the <laughs> IMDb in the show notes. Um, it is a found footage horror film. Um, of it as above, so Hold on, I'm classic pap. <laughs> yeah, the classic <laughs> pap. Uh, so as as above, so below. It came out in 2014. It's a found footage horror film. So think like on the same level as like Cloverfield, Cloverfield or Paranormal Activity or the Blair Witch mm-hmm. Project. You know. Um, yeah. It is about uh, this this woman who is an archaeologist, but she studies the history of alchemy. And mm-hmm. so alchemy being the kind of rival scientific school to, like, empirical study. Um, thinking that, you know, if one... Like, you could have control over elements, the main goal being finding a way to create eternal life, turn lead into gold, that kind of thing. But then um, they go to on this like adventure because like her father was studying uh, Nicholas Flamel, who was actually like was a famous alchemist of the Middle Ages. Mm-hmm. Uh, they go to Paris and eventually they're looking for they're looking for the philosopher's stone, which was the holy grail of alchemy it was the stone that could give eternal life and do all of those alchemy things uh through their adventures they have to go into the catacombs of paris where they have like all the, you know, the bones and things from the removed cemetery six million of them but how did they how did they navigate the catacombs so, yes yeah, yeah so they Wait, you've been there yeah what yeah i've been to, i've been to the catacombs yeah. below oh, that's paris. cool you've been there yeah yeah, oh, shit, I lived in so Europe, cool. guys. That's really fucking cool. Yeah, yeah. You guys didn't know this? Yeah, I, I lived in. Uh, I've li- I didn't know you lived in Paris. Been to, though. No, to I didn't extent. live in Paris, man. I've just I backpacked through. So yeah, I was um, I was dating a Danish lady oh, cool. and uh, moved over there for three months. Applied for the University of Aalborg, mm-hmm. and uh, then we broke up. But other than, I mean, it was great. Yeah, we went to the catacombs. <laughs> we went uh, went all around, man. It was, it was sick all the way down. Well, to so Portugal. I think. I think because of that, I think you would enjoy uh, this film. Yes, that they. Because, but so uh, they have tour guide. Oh uh, yeah. So <laughs> so the one thing about it is that this is not like I love this movie not because it's like so like Midsummer is like a true like our tour horror film right. As yeah, above, so below is way better than it has any right to be in its genre, <laughs> but it is like. It's kind of rough around the edges a little bit. The acting is very kind of over the top. Some of it's the like plot points. It's backwardly, like backwardsly better than it should be, yes. essentially. Like yes. the first watch through, you're kind of thinking, what the hell? But then as you watch it a little more, you realize like it's accidentally excelling at what it should be, which is very funny in and yeah, of itself. Yeah, yeah. But then also, too, from the aspect of like found footage horror films, it's actually one of the better found footage horror films because of the way they do the shots. <laughs> Um, I think you would enjoy it too because the plot is all wrapped up in studying ancient history and old it's history. Very yeah, and there's a lot of like a lot of references to actual history and things that happened as a plot point. Um, it's a, it's a really cool I, film. 
I do have a hot take for um, found footage films, and John, you're probably going to scream at me for this. <laughs> I'm not a fan of uh, Cloverfield. Really? Get out of here. It you bored nope. me. No, nope. you're fired. Wow. That's no, unacceptable. Well, I'm we're, hurt. Okay, uh, I'm we're taking applications yeah. for a new uh, yeah. social media yeah. manager. Wow. Please yes. imply, uh, reply yes. in the contact. I'm not like mad at it. I don't hate it. Uh, how but dare I guess, you? Like, maybe, maybe I was introduced to it poorly. I don't know. I've only had like one solid wa- run through. Maybe. So maybe that's like a, a weekend project for us, John. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. Right. Um, it just like, I don't know. It it just didn't do much for me. Wow. Uh, see so that was now that I've lost my job. Yeah, <laughs> I love that. I saw Cloverfield in the theater when it came out, and I I remember at the time a lot of people having that reaction to it that they thought it was boring or they thought it was just really stupid. Like, I went and saw it, and I remember I went with my friend. We went on a Friday night, and this was like I think we were in like I don't know sophomore year of high school maybe, and walking across You're the old. yeah I know right. <laughs> walking across the street to the theater and our our friend from school like coming up and slamming on the brakes and being like hey hey what are you doing he's like i just fucking saw a movie cloverfield don't go see that it's so fucking bad i walked out in the first five minutes it was garbage and he just then he just sped off and me and my friend is like what and so that we went and saw it and it was gr- i thought it was great i'm um, see i don't feel I, like i don't feel like strongly like that mm-hmm. like it's something i'd watch for sure but i mean i guess just i watched it many like uh, quite a few years after it like the first had come out mm-hmm. and i just remember like that's a name i'd always heard like the cloverfield movies whatever and i just mm-hmm. i don't know why it just really like there's no other way to phrase it except it really didn't do anything for me so I don't know if I need to revisit it or convene with God or something regarding it, but I'll add that to my to-do list. <laughs> no, I, no, um, I, I get I mean, it. Uh, it's it's ahead, definitely sorry. not for it's not it's not for everybody. Cloverfields, it's it's not for everybody. I think, but I like like Cloverfield Lane. Like that's a good one. I liked um, the mm-hmm. one that Netflix did. I thought that that was great. I mean, pretty much anything, any sci-fi. Oh, which one was that? Um, Cloverfield Paradox. Yeah, oh, that, that was that was the that was that fucking I, masterpiece. I, I'm going to part. I'm going to part with you, Rick. Here, that was a, no. a big old turd. Honestly, so, no, but I loved it. So if I'm fired, I can say whatever I want. Right? <laughs> yeah, that, was, this. Uh, that was not good. How dare you? That was not good. How dare you? How dare you? <laughs> That's how I Gotta feel. Gotta go back to my uh, day job. I'm sorry. I I, I um there's. What that's that's actually a good good point is what what movies do you got that movies that everyone likes and you hate um and I'm gonna yeah so Sammy I'll, I'll leave that to you or you know I'm gonna I'm gonna let you think on that John what movie mm-hmm. do you hate that the average like the majority of people like oh um. John go off. Ah, so many choices. Um, <laughs> I think the first one I'm gonna go with is Star Wars. Hate is a little strong, but okay, I no, I can I can go off on this. Yeah, hate hate is is like burning, seething hatred. No, but think it's not sci-fi think that it being classified as sci-fi is an insult to sci-fi and also thinking that it's one of the most overhyped fan things at least in terms of the film uh i will put that addendum there the extended universe of star wars is fantastic like the novelizations and the games and everything like that incredible lore lots of lore love it big lore you know I come from more of the score standpoint here. Okay, the scores are I, good. I made the mistake of getting a fine arts degree. <laughs> so <laughs> I can read music and have taught many different ensembles, and they always want to do like Star Wars, whatever else. Um, but after going through um, a lot of the Star Wars score, it's all just holst with John Williams' freaking name. Mm-hmm. on it and yeah. i think john williams is incredibly talented i've played quite a bit of his music i've seen him conduct he's a brilliant man mm-hmm. but i as a as a trombonist <laughs> um gustav holst as a composer did not get nearly as much credit as he deserved for how he affected 
um, just, you know, instrumental music in general. Mm. And then how everybody hears certain themes from Star Wars and thinks, oh, that's the Star Wars this. That's really cool. It's like, actually, this is from his planet suite. And I think it's really cool that John Williams took those ideas and sort of brought them to popularity. But a lot of people aren't aware that it does come from like a classical background. Mm -hmm. Um, And sort of like the hype that comes with like, oh, John Williams, like, brought this uh like brand new type of music to light is really not right you know and very frustrating to try to convey to people because a lot of the time they'll just shut me up and be like oh well you're just some trombone player who has opinions i mean that's right (laughs) Um, but they're not unfounded opinions um so so that that kind of overrides that for me but i do have like some sort of like nostalgic thing with like the first like the old first three like star wars movies because like i could my dad still has like the little box three like Mm -hmm. uh vhs VHS set of those and those were like movie night like we'd bring out sleeping bags in the living room make popcorn whatever and like for like a childhood standpoint i loved that looking back on them i'm just kind of meh yeah now you know um so that's kind of how i feel about star wars is like i think disney star wars was always kind of like a third tier one of mine um Mm -hmm. I will say though, um, I think the best Star Wars movies are the prequels, one, two, and three, in that order. Or actually, uh, three, three, one, and two. Um, I think Phantom Menace was better than, not better than A New Hope, but better than Return of the Jedi. And I think the uh, Revenge of the Sith, Episode Three, was the best Star Wars film by like a country mile. Um, I think George Lucas gets shit on a lot for his filmmaking because he tinkered so much. But in terms of storytelling, pacing, fleshing out of things like, yeah, you still have the Padme died from a broken heart uh, kind of thing. You know, there's still you, also the memes are so good from those, you know. Yeah, um, the memes are pretty But I, th- I think I think on 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 the whole, the Star Wars film franchise, I think, are are all they're all fun action movies but they're not sci-fi because i think if you can put if you put them in sci-fi you're saying that they're analogous to like blade runner and dune and fahrenheit fahrenheit 451 and 1984 and these like absolutely masterpiece monumental pieces of art where i think star wars is kind of like normie sci-fi sort of yeah star wars star wars is drama and space yeah and i think that's okay i think it yeah. has its own place sure, you know sure. it's a space I, like, opera. like kind of yeah yeah for real bouncing bouncing back to like the whole cloverfield thing like i guess it kind of like goes into like what you expect from the film like when i went into cloverfield i definitely expected like i love horror movies i love spooky shit i love all that so i expected it to be like really intense mm-hmm. in a way i expected and because it didn't fit what I expected, I think that's why I didn't like mesh so well with it, sure, you know. Sure. Um, so just it's how you interpret sci-fi, John. Yeah, um, and I think yes, yeah, <laughs> I I think sci-fi. Now this is too, uh, yeah, shocker. Uh, my favorite <laughs> sci-fi franchise is Star Trek by a country mile, and I grew up watching Star Trek: The Next Generation like religiously. I've seen the series through multiple times, you know, you know. I know I love I love Star Trek. Um, Star Trek is sci-fi. Sci-fi is meant yeah. to be cerebral and plodding and slow. Um, like you know, like uh, what was his name? Michael, um, hmm, the guy that wrote Rick Jurassic. Looks like he has things to say. The guy that wrote Jurassic Park, uh, Michael Crichton, like a, like yeah. uh, like a Michael Crichton novel. You know, that's sci-fi for me at least. So, I, I mean, so, I, you're not wrong. Oh, sorry, Greg, go ahead. No, no, uh, I was, I was going to say, I like uh, all the Star Trek movies with Chris Pine. I'm a huge fan of all of those. Mm-hmm. As far as, like, the, the TV episodes, I'm probably not in. Um, but I, I you see your to piss point. Me I hear what's going on. <laughs> Dude, I'm just, I'm just, you know, I'm just saying, like, I, 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 I mean, I was a kid and I just wasn't into it. I wasn't into it. I think I could I mean, that's into not, it. So not, every, not everybody's autistic. That's fair. Uh, however, uh, how fucking dare you? You say that you like those J.J. Abram. Oh, they're God. the best. They're, they're amazing. terrible. Absolutely, they're absolutely terrible. I can oh, yeah, hear man. John from my apartment, and he lives <laughs> how many blocks away from me? With, with, um, with uh, when Benedict Cumber, Cumber, whatever, but Benedict Cumberbatch, Cumberbatch, Cumber, yeah, Cumberbatch. But when he plays Khan, I'm like, I'm all in. 
I want to know more about that. Like that, that's no. legit. The, the I think the first two <laughs> no. were legit. The third Star Wars, total, total piece of shit. It, it was absolutely terrible. Um, but I think the first two uh, masterpieces, I think the show was complete trash. And uh, that's just, you know, that's my Wait, opinion. Wait, so that's you're, you're calling Star Trek complete trash or that you just no, didn't no, no. enjoy I it because the, I the might throw mo- hands? The, the movies, <laughs> the J.J. Abrams movies were incredible as far as the show goes. It's trash. Just, no, I don't know. No, I've never iconic. watched you got that. You got that oh backwards, bro. You got that backwards, dude. Oh my god. Benedict gosh, Cumberbatch the... cannot even approach the level like Mike... that Ricardo Montalban did as Khan. Like my the Revenge of Khan of is watching Star Trek was like I was seven years old and my dad fell asleep on the couch and Star Trek was left on. But if I touched the remote, all hell was gonna break loose. And um. Fuck, what was the, the the Star Trek episode with the little fluffy guys? Oh, the Tribbles. Um, the, trouble, the, the Trouble with Tribbles. The Trouble with Tribbles. That shit horrified me. Oh, it's me. fucking... Oh. That's the thing. Is the original <laughs> the original series of Star Trek, I am not... I am a fan of because of what it did for the franchise and what it right. established. But, it, ah, it's very campy. It's very... No, it's very campy, it's but very like going bad, back to like where you know. something cheesy can sort of like scratch that itch to a certain extent, mm-hmm. too. But like the next generation is just like, that's... That was my, Cinema. you know, Comcast cable childhood. Cinema. Like, uh, and then you, uh, you're not even bringing up Deep Space Nine, like, low-key, oh, just as good goodness. as Next Gen. And Voyager, okay, so not to, bad. So to de-escalate this, <laughs> to de-escalate this, um, <laughs> Rick, you were saying your original question posed was, what, like, popular movies are we not fans of? Yes. Um, I have been up since 5 a.m. and have been going nonstop, okay. so... Um, for uh, so here we go. lack of for lack of brain function, like what would you consider like extremely popular movies that people like? Like I'm just failing I'm to like. Bl- I'm gonna say blockbuster, like blockbuster oh, okay, movies. Okay. You know okay. that most people. That wasn't. That's my bad. I wasn't super specific. So think well, of I guess a I'm just like. What would we? What would we? John, what would you consider like a blockbuster? Like a blockbuster like, that is je- like the Independence Day. I mean, Star Wars. Park, I would consider that. Yeah. Day. Star Wars, yes, Day, yes, yeah, yeah. You're kind of event. I'll give you movies. more time to Ju- like the Jumanji movies in the marinate. last few years. Yeah, marinate. yeah. I'll give you. Um, what you think about that? I don't that. know. The... Yeah, I need to use the Rick, last what bit of brain you power got? I have. All Disney movies suck. Yeah, um, what movies do you so hate? I just want to throw that out That's there right statement. now. That's a statement. That's a statement. Um, yeah, if you're an adult, we can we can go off. If you're I don't even like Disney, and you and I like might throw Disney. That down. If if you're an adult and you like Disney, fuck you. No, I'm just kidding. Wow. <laughs> I'm just kidding. So, I, Disney okay, is so for I children. need a little more clarification from you, Rick, because you're making a lot of general statements here. Um, within the Disney movie thing, like, are you saying, like, adults that are just Disney nuts? Because, like, I yes, understand Disney, that. Like, the Disney only part nuts. of their personality is going to Disneyland. Like, yes. But, like, Disney don't nuts. get me Disney wrong. Nuts. I... More frequently than I should watch Hercules because if Hercules, like Hercules if you he's like our man. Frozen. If he can't do it, no one can. If you like Frozen, I'm talking like the good shit. Uh, I'm sorry. Hercules I'm sorry. Is a good, it's Mulan. A good film. It's a good Mulan film. I, I like does Hercules. not suck. Sucks. Mulan is great. Sucks. Wow. Wait, the new Hercules. one or the old oh one? God. The old one. Okay. Well, it's just so much like. One. I walk through my daily life, and I haven't seen Hercules in months since the last time I rented it on John's Prime. Like, I should just buy it at this point. <laughs> Hercules. There you go. <laughs> uh, you know what? You know what? Nope. Not on the. Not on my show. Nope. We can't do this. Uh, okay. I'm, I have, I'm trying to... I have a question for Rick. Buster? Yeah. What? What? Well, this is sort of like a side, side question, I guess. Um... What was like? What was like a favorite movie of yours when you were younger? Like like ch- like childhood movie necessarily, but doesn't have to be a kids movie. Like for me, I loved the Alien series when I was about seven. I had no idea and had nightmares about it, and <laughs> still watched it all the time because I fell in love with Sigourney Weaver, like just on the screen, and I loved everything about it. And to me, like that's like a childhood movie, even though you wouldn't think like I'm gonna show my seven year old this. 
Okay, so real quick, because um, uh, you kind of roboted out there. You asked no. me oh, what no, movie I would want. No, no, that's, I think it's probably my fault. Um, you asked me fault. what movie, <laughs> what movie did I watch when I was younger? Or like, I, I missed it. I'm gonna be honest, I missed it. So time. essentially, like, out. what movie was like a favorite, like childhood movie of yours that doesn't necessarily fall into like kids movie genre? Oh, dude, Jurassic Park for sure. I had nightmares. Okay. Constantly, uh, I could not get enough of it. I would watch it and just barely be able to sleep. Something and like, and I think that, that was the me Lost with Alien. World. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I, Alien scared the shit out of me too. I loved Al- the thing. Are you kidding? I watched. I don't know how, like, why my parents let me watch these films, but I would scare the shit out of myself. Especially, it <laughs> didn't matter what time of day. If I watched The Lost World, Jurassic, and I watched that movie a thousand times. I would have nightmares and and I couldn't sleep. I always I was like, if I get out of bed, and I might have to pee, like if I get out of bed, I know that a velociraptor is going to eat me. And I'd always check if my I get out window. Of bed, I'm dying. <laughs> yeah, that's a hundred percent. I was the worst. Alien, same thing. That movie was terrifying. Um, yeah. I, so and you, you, yeah, man. I I I haven't thought about that in a long time. I love all the. Did you like the like Prometheus? Um, the new like Ridley um, Scott prequel to I, Alien. I think I watched it. How dare you? But I mean, if that doesn't say how I felt about it in the moment, like I I don't remember, and I also I might have to revisit it to be frank because I'm I'm just a creature of habit. Like when I find a thing I like, oh did I robot out? No. Or is that John? No. No. Nope. Okay. Nope. Um, when I find a thing I like, like I like similar to how you were saying you're a little resistant to change. Um, that's the same thing for me. I'll sit and watch the thing a thousand times because I like it, you know. Yeah. Um, which when you brought up the thing, that made me very happy because that is like my all time favorite. It's a masterpiece. So good. It's a masterpiece. It's a great. That's a great film. Uh, and I'm now I'm, I'm trying to rack my brain of blockbusters that everyone likes. That and the that dog's head split open in the thing the oh first time God. I saw that. Like, similar how you were saying you don't know how your parents let you watch this stuff. It was all stuff that my mom, like, just this helicopter Jewish mother, was always like, mm-hmm. don't let her watch that, blah, blah, blah. And then the minute she left, my dad would just be like, don't tell mom or you don't get to watch it again. Oh. And his rule was like, if it gives you nightmares or if it scares you, we don't we don't watch it anymore. So I definitely had nightmares about the husky head splitting open, but I was fascinated. So I never <laughs> told my dad. Oh, and nice. when I was in college, I told my dad that that gave me nightmares. And he got mad at me. He was like, why wouldn't I let you watch it, blah, blah, blah. But I was like, I wanted to watch it. It was really good. That's so funny. You just suffered yeah. in silence. I, uh, I got I to see the it. thing. I yeah. love it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> in uh, in Portland, there's uh, the Hollywood Theater, which is like an mm-hmm. old. Uh, I've been there. Yeah, it's like an Egyptian style theater, and they have a massive projector with uh, seven, what, seventy seven millimeter, seventy two millimeter, uh, analog film with the original magnetic four track uh, recordings for the audio. I got to see the thing and two thousand one A Space Odyssey at that theater, and that was really cool the unfortunately the master for the thing they had was pretty rough but it, like it was still really really good still just saying that experience like mm-hmm. i yeah, I, I really literally just googled for... blockbuster movies popular because my brain just things aren't happening um i guess so... one in the opposite direction i enjoyed the second independence day um, oh dude i, I it thought it was bad. a masterpiece I thought it was great. Really? Okay, I, good. I want them. I, to ex- I want them to expand that universe. They need to expand the universe. I 100. Yeah, percent I agree. Am all all in favor of that. It's it's an original like sci-fi story that they mm-hmm. need to expand. Like I'm so curious about what they'll never make another one. But like I loved it. I fucking loved that film. No, unfortunately. I said it. It, f- it feels good to say I, that. that uh, when I, I, I hated, saw it I, in. Uh, yeah, I saw it in theaters. Feels, good. <laughs> Feels right. I saw it in theaters, and the two people that I saw it with, we, I was, I was loving it the whole time. I thought it was great. It came out the theater, and I was just like, "What'd you guys think?" And they were just like, "That was fucking awful. That was terrible." And I was like, "What?" Oh, I have a hot take. What, <laughs> dude? I thought it was great. I've got. Uh, yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry, Sydney. No, you're fine. Um, 
and this, once again, this is more from like a music standpoint because that's just how my brain works. Mm -hmm. I am so over West Side Story. And I know that's a huge deal. It is such like an iconic thing. Everybody and their mother and their grandmother goes on about West Side Story. Someone's a shark, movie, someone's a jet. The movie itself, just it's just the same rehashed story about we don't want this person being with this person. So we're going to do yeah, music a, about The music just a, is amazing. It's Romeo and Juliet. Yeah, no, yeah. literally. The music is yeah. amazing, don't get me wrong. Like I, it's like I love how, it's like how O Brother Were Aren't Thou is the Odyssey. You know? Yeah, but I mean it just there's just always like like before I hadn't seen it till I was in college and anytime I like somebody would mention West Side Story, I'd be like, Oh I haven't seen it. They'd act like I just like killed their child <laughs> and I was like, What what are you what is going on? Like why is this this important to you? I don't think I've ever seen it. And these weren't people that even like grew up like my mother is like a thousand years old, so like her opinion with this makes a little bit of sense. Mm -hmm. But it's people my age are like, What do you mean you haven't seen West Side Story? And it's like unless you're a theater person, get off my back. Like <laughs> I don't think I've oh ever seen so, West Side Story either. So So the the blockbuster that I hate, and I hate to say this, because I'll I'll they'll still take all my money, are the two new Jurassic uh park so the jurassic world effing sucks and then the mm -hmm. fallen kingdom <laughs> is terrible too mm -hmm. I and still i'm gonna see the next one that terrible. they put out like i will see i will watch all of them but just just know this i hate them all and uh, it's upsetting <laughs> just know this i don't want to but I'm, i think i have to i think it's a compulsion i'm, I'm all in i'm I, all I, I in think the on new... like this franchise yeah Go ahead. Yeah, I'm all in on this franchise. I think the like, new no matter, okay, Jurassic Park one. ones. I think the new the new ones though, they like when they had that scene in the first movie where, um, who was the female lead in that? Dallas Bryce Howard. Jessica Chastain. Uh, when she's no, running, she's no. always. No, it's, it's no, it's it's Bryce <laughs> Dallas Howard. Uh, that Jessica You're Chastain right. or no Bryce Dallas Howard. No, if, uh, <laughs> no offense, is great value. Jessica Chastain. Um, <laughs> um, that whole whole thing about how there was a big brouhaha about how she was in heels the first movie and it became this big cultural bullshit about like she's a feminist why is she wearing heels why is she running in heels why is she a damsel in distress and then the second movie there was like a good three or four shots that it was just very on the nose like she's in boots she's not wearing heels she's not, <laughs> she's not serving the patriarchy she's serving kicks to the face i yeah. um have literally been looking at um a list of oh fuck, uh top 100 films of all time and the list i'm looking at right now is unadjusted for inflation so it's a lot of <laughs> newer stuff uh -huh. um but i was just scrolling to jog my brain of things i've experienced in my life and um for some reason suicide squad is on here yeah that made a lot of movie a lot of money did you not like it <laughs> it it was no, it wasn't very good. It, it wasn't was very bad. Good. I didn't like. I didn't. No, like it was it. terrible. It was bad. The music wasn't even good. Like no. the thing that got me was like, and maybe I'm garbage for this, but I, I'm a, I'm a fan of Panic at the Disco, and they're like, oh, Brandon Urie's gonna do like, you know, a cover of one of these songs. That wasn't even good. It's like they half-assed it and put a name on it, and then made the money off well, of that it. Which was Tom, they're still making wasn't more money that Tom than me. So. who did that? Uh, that's a great I think question. so because he he Junkie XL, I think, because he's he did a lot of the other Zack Snyder films. Um, so I don't know if he did all of the DC movies, but yeah, that, but that was, was that was not one of his. Down. That was not a good score, and if that was Hulkenberg, that was one of his his worst scores. Like it was just, um, it just felt very on the nose. I don't think it was Hulkenberg. Oh, that could be why it sucked. Honestly. But yeah, that was just one. Like not even with the music, but just the the whole thing. Like just didn't. There was no flow to the movie. It just it was rough. Yeah. Agreed. What are you guys' thoughts on Hans Zimmer? Hans? Hans? Hans Zimmer? Hans, Hans, Hans thank you. Zimmer. Hans, Hans Zimmer is Zimmer. a genius. Okay. I think he's the best pop be culture that... composer of all time. I just like, want to ten be times that we're John on the same page. Oh. Mm. Mm. I think that's rude. Give me a second. I'm refreshing my brain. He did... Uh, I mean, he did, he did the, the Lion, Lion King. King. He did, which I did just see the Lion King on Broadway in New York, and that you're was welcome. a time. You're welcome. That was yeah. so. That, that was, was amazing. Hans. He's done all of. I was like one of three adults, and the rest were children, but it was still amazing. It was so good. 
Um, he also did. Um, he's done some oddball, oddball ones like he scored. He did the Pirates of the Caribbean. That's yep. what I'm thinking of. Yeah, he also every scored. Every middle school ensemble I've t- taught has been like, "Can we play the Pirates of the Caribbean thing?" Because it's fun. So I was like, "Where have I seen?" I mean, it is fun, but when you hear it a thousand times with eighth graders holding saxophones, <laughs> it's like a <laughs> fever <so> dream. <laughs> Let's see. So Hans Zimmer, back to the '90s. Hans Zimmer scored uh, The Rock. Uh, with Nick Cage and good movie. Um, good Sean movie. Connery, the Rock's amazing. he did as good Sean as it Connery. gets. He did the Prince of Egypt, um, <laughs> Mission Take Impossible Two, for please. Gladiator, <laughs> Black Hawk Down, Pearl Harbor, Hannibal, Invincible, um, The Ring, The Last Samurai. He's done all of Chris Nolan's film or most of Chris Nolan's films. Um, he's got a hell of filmog- or discography that he's done, and. I think in terms of like pop culture composing, I think he's better than John Williams because John Williams kind of just did the same score over and over again. And I, I feel like you could argue the same with Hans Zimmer though. And I think it just boils down to what genre and like yeah, what time period I they're think, working in because I think the difference John though, Williams is also like a thousand years old. Yeah. And if you look at like his stuff, like essentially pre star Wars, cause mm-hmm. that was a really big deal for him. He had a lot more variety there before he kind of found that, like, like yeah. that. And like, Zimmer is the same of, way. This makes me money. Yeah, Zimmer yeah. is the same way. His his scores were more varied before Inception and after Inception. It's just like low brass, you know. No, that's true. Uh, yeah. um, and I love that. <laughs> but I think in terms of the way that Hans Zimmer, I guess I like Hans Zimmer better because. Hans Zimmer does a lot of work with synthesizers. Like a lot of his scores are done through so more in your field. Yeah, exactly. So Hans Zimmer utilizes like the Yamaha. What is that? A CS seven or something? Uh, the one that uh, Ridley Scott had, uh, or that Vangelis used to score Blade Runner. Um, he he does a lot of his composing digitally with synthesizers, and then he goes to orchestra. Um, I also like the quality of the recordings that Hans Zimmer gets. I will say the recording quality is versus is, because now that I've been around you for two years, mm-hmm. I, I can hear these things. Um, I, I can absolutely I won't hold that, that against John Williams because Williams was recording before, you know, large scale right. recording like that became practical and to the high level it is. But mm. Hans Zimmer's recording, and so is Tom Hulkenberg, I think, is on the same level of modern composers as Hans Zimmer. Um, their quality and their variability within their style is is wild like i mean hans zimmer scored inception he in score he scored um like the lion king and he scored the holiday yeah so like that's some wild versatility i want to watch the rock now i know that's a good oh, movie. the rock's a great film that was another one that was always on like around dinner time that my dad would like always have on i gotta i hate to cut this short guys but i got a plane to catch so I will uh, oh you're going hunting that's right yeah so I I will well I'm going to um, a little secret spot Um, I'll tell you more about that offline but uh, I got I got to go and uh, (laughs) super happy to have you on on the team and 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 happy to uh say hello to your dog for me uh as you know what this we did a good job (laughs) uh this is your first podcast so uh you did great and uh, oh, didn't Welcome turn into a bummer Thank cast, you. which I'm I'm a little bit upset about. I'm not gonna lie to you. I was hoping to get wow. a little sad. You know, I've been. You're bummed I've that been, it's not a I just can't cast. please you. I'm a little bit bummed. <laughs> I can't. I'm a little bit bummed. Because they're like a couple. But no, it's uh, it's we're 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 happy. To, there's stay tuned, listeners. There is we've got some pretty awesome guests coming uh, coming up. There's a lot. We're coming. gonna be getting into aliens a lot. We've we've got a way for aliens, magnets, sass, how do they fucking work? Squatch, you labor. We're getting brains. into it all. We're gonna uncover old people brains. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna uncover the mysteries of the universe together because that's what we do. Thanks for listening, folks, and uh, we'll see you next week. Happy Halloween. <laughs> <laughs>